Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Stalls TV Morning Show. I'm Zach. And I'm Josh. And we have what I think is a pretty exciting show for you today. It's our behind the scenes day of Stalls TV. You might notice we're coming to you from a different studio. This is our Ink Drop Studio, one of three at the Stalls TV Studios grand opening, which is happening uh, tomorrow and Wednesday. So not only are we behind the scenes, but we have some pretty hot topics that I, I think are pretty relevant for our viewers. Yeah, absolutely. One of the things that we'll cover first in our opening discussion is all about overcoming price pressure for your business. So uh, we'll pull you throughout the uh, presentation on overcoming yeah. price pressure and talk about five ways that you can overcome price pressure and competitive pricing in your business. Yeah, um, sure. The other key thing that we're going to talk about, which it will kind of play into that, is mm -hmm. trends and really back to school trends uh, for apparel. Um, not only uh, ladies wear, but also men's wear and try to give you some ideas on how you can leverage these trends in your business to generate fall sales. All right, you ready to head to the table? Let's talk about price right. pressure. Great. So you saw a poll launch uh, before you logged, or right when you logged on, about price pressure. And basically it came back that, that most of you experience price pressure in your business, pretty much 100% of you experience price pressure. We understand that. We work in sales. We do too. You know, yeah. we, we get price pressure all the time. But it is a top problem for businesses in all industries and specifically uh, in ours really. So there's, there's a lot of things that happen when you start to run into price pressure. What are some of the consequences of price pressure before we tell everybody how to combat it? Well, it depends on if you succumb to the pressure. So um, ultimately, it, it gets you thinking. That's mm -hmm. why you're all here today to understand how to combat it. But if you succumb to that price pressure, uh, basically it generates a, a lack of cash flow mm -hmm. um, that can be really crippling to the business because you can't do the things uh, that you need to do. You can't keep the staff that you need to have mm -hmm. to run your business because you're selling at prices that just aren't profitable in what you've established for your business. Yeah, and it can become absolutely uh, exhausting. Um, not only from just getting in those types of negotiations where you have to battle on price for every job, so the sales cycle takes a little bit longer, but think about if you are cutting your profits in half, you're then going to have to double your sales. So you're going to have to work a lot harder on the sales side. And if you have a sales staff, they're going to get tired of you beating them and whipping them to get, to get more sales and, you know, it, battle price every time. You, you kind of get sick of doing that. So today's theme or it, it worked out this way as we planned the show, it's all coming out in fives. Yeah. So we said maybe at the end of the show we'll give high fives. Uh, but Virtual high five. Yes, but what we're gonna start with is the five ways to overcome price pressure. Okay, number one uh, way to overcome price pressure is be first. And what we've thought of when we say be first, it means basically stay on top of trends from a blank wearable mm -hmm. standpoint and also a decoration standpoint. Approaching your customer, in some case mutual customers first, with a particular style of garment, decoration technique, decoration look, is always a way to be the cream that rises to the top so you're not competing where that price war is happening on basic standard finishes. Yeah, I guess if you're the only one who has it, how is somebody going to compete with you price-wise? You just won't run into that argument. I mean. Um, I know in some of the basic 101 college courses that you take in marketing, they tell you one of the keys to building a successful business is being the first to market. Well, in our industry, it's being the first to have that new look or that new decoration finish. You can definitely maximize profit early on, and then as other people begin to adopt it, you may have to uh, adjust accordingly, but be on to the next thing. Yeah, part of, part of being first is really knowing where to look. Yeah. Uh, for the latest styles, the latest decoration techniques, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm just curious, uh, we have the poll set up, correct, um, to launch today. So one of the polls that we'd like to launch for you is just a question on where do you go to find out you know, the latest styles, the latest trends. So I'm not sure the exact wording of the question there, but if we can launch that question and understand where you go um, to look to be first. Yeah, so we have uh, four or five different options for you there. One of the options is do you go to trade shows? Do you go to other uh, retailers? Yeah. Do you look online? Um, or trade And lastly, in trade publications, nice. or, or all of the above. So we're going to uh, leave that poll open for just a few more seconds while you weigh in, and then we're going to go to our producer, uh, Courtney, to see what the results are. All right, so what do we have? Where do people go? Where do our viewers go first? Mm -hmm. And then 12% retailers, and we got 64% all of the above. 
OK? Great. So most of you are already using all of these resources that we would recommend to you on how to be first. So 64% of you are using all of the above, and very small percentages kind of uh, scattered along the way. Yeah, naturally, that's the preferred technique to stay on top of things is to look at all the different places where a trend may happen first so you can stay on top of it for your local yeah. area for your particular market. One of the options we didn't give you was to look at your competitors because we were hoping if you were looking at your competitors on how to be first, you're obviously not. not you're second. Yeah, you're least. second already. <laughs> All right, so the second way that we think you can overcome price pressure outside of being first is being best. And that comes in a number of different ways. You need to be the best on quality. You need to be the best, not necessarily the fastest, on turn time, but you need to measure up with the expectations that you set, meet the promises that you make. And then you also have to have the best experience. And when we say experience, we're not just talking about the follow-up after the sale, but it is how long does it take to get a quote? How pleasant was the experience? How easy did you make it for me to place an order? There's a lot of different ways to be the best. It's probably difficult to be the best in all of those, but choose a few and make them work for you. Yeah, certainly being uh, aware that, that these are small details often of a transaction mm -hmm. that you need to focus on in your business. So being the best in how you market them, present your brand. Mm -hmm. um, basically following it all the way through to conclusion and follow up just to make sure that experience that a customer receives, perhaps a first time customer, even a customer that ordered the 10th time or the 12th time, yeah. that you're delivering that same top quality experience and aiming to be best. Yeah, even the way you deliver the the way that you deliver your quotes, the way that they look, the way that everything is merchandised can go into driving up the perceived value of your product or, or your service. So you want to be the best all the way through. Think about the process from when they get their quote to when you send them their final invoice. What does that look like? Good. And then part of being best, which is our third point, mm -hmm. in, in some cases to overcome price pressure, you need to just be convenient. Mm -hmm. So it's allowing a customer to complete a transaction um, often in a quick manner or a manner they expect. But even more than just that, it's all about location, yep. right? So there's ways to set yourself apart from competitors by being convenient in different locations. The example I like to give here is if you take a sort of a business strategy approach to this mm -hmm. and say, we're going to print on site. You know, there's a couple different things that happen when you're printing on site at an event. Number one is typically if you're the one that approaches it, like under uh, the Friday night lights at high school football games, mm -hmm. there's probably not a whole other lot of apparel decorators set up selling apparel beside you. So it gives you the opportunity to really sell at profits mm -hmm. um, that you want to make, um, where there's impulse buying decisions happening, and you can make good profit on every item that you decorate. Yeah, I know when uh, the most I've ever paid for a t-shirt in my life was, it's at events, whether it's a concert, whether it's Disney on ice with the kids. I mean, that's an expensive t-shirt right there, but I, I have no other options because they're there, it's convenient, and it's impulse on demand buying. Can I have that, Dad? Yeah, exactly. I want that. I want that. <laughs> we are not leaving without a fit if I don't have that. Yeah. So. And he has four of them, so it can be quite yeah, the fit. That's true. Yeah. So, so be, be, be convenient <laughs> is point number three. So the fourth way that we can overcome price pressure, we have be first, be best, be convenient, be disciplined. I love this one. Yeah, this is one that I actually dislike the actual process of being disciplined, but um, once you do it, it usually works out for the best. It's not punishment, remember, it's discipline. So yeah. discipline's for the good, punishment's for the bad. Right, and self-discipline is one of the toughest things. So especially if you're a, uh, a one-man or one-woman shop, or even if you have a small group, just being disciplined in the rules you set for pricing. So obviously mm -hmm. that starts when you're establishing the rules, making sure that you have a, a strategy that you approach pr pricing with, whether that's a good, better, best strategy and mm -hmm. we don't devalue our better or our good even. Uh, we have those choices to direct customers to and being disciplined in that approach, not, not dropping our price um, for whatever reason. There could be a thousand different reasons yeah. to drop price, but just being disciplined in your approach and being willing to walk away from a job uh, yeah. is, is a good thing. One other way to be disciplined is to have accountability in your pricing process. And yeah. if, you're, if you're a one-man business, and you don't have anybody to be accountable to, make it a sibling, make it a spouse, make it some type of significant other to where they are not in the heat or the emotions of the negotiating process and feeling the same need that you feel to gain that business. They might have a clearer head about pricing decisions that way. So bounce your pricing when you are going to concede 
bounce that pricing off of somebody that, that you're accountable to. Right, and even you know, in larger business, having sort of a, a final sign-off on pricing when it needs to be outside of the box pricing, just mm -hmm. to make sure that there is um, a strategic approach to that, a consistency to the minimum profit that you want to make, and really just making sure that pricing is right. I think there's a song about that, right? There's a TV show, The Price is Right. The Price is Right? <laughs> maybe, it's a, maybe it's a TV show. Okay. I was thinking that it takes two to make pricing right. Oh, okay. But okay. anyways. Yeah. So yeah, it definitely having two people involved in pricing, especially when there's a discount involved, um, is helpful. That way there's multiple yeah. accountability. And the other thing, before we leave that point, because I know this is a big issue, because I've heard this at trade shows from mm -hmm. customers, especially... Um, you know, you're in this business sometimes for a lot of other reasons other than just making money, but you need to have money to stay in business. So mm -hmm. even when there's a cause or a, rela a unique relationship that you have, or it's your kid's ball team, or it's your brother's um, company that you're selling shirts to, mm -hmm. not conceding on those price issues because nobody wants to sit there and tie up their capacity for minimum profit per shirt. That's why if you have two people involved, yeah. you're a lot less, um, you don't have the risk and you conceding pricing because of a unique relationship. These are the rules of the business. We have to make this much money, and this is how it works. Does it ever make sense, in, in your opinion, to um, not make as much money on an order? Because I think there's probably yeah. some, some places where it does. I mean, it's like a loss leader strategy. Yeah, I like, the, I, mean, I like the loss leader strategy, but you definitely have to have it as a strategy, not just we have these loss leaders, which often happens to decorators. So what mm -hmm. that basically means is, you know, it's your lead-in. It's basically the cost to acquire a customer. So I've seen it in e-commerce business yeah. often where they're selling, you know, $2.88 embroidered polos, and you're like, how can I ever compete with that? Well, that's their hook. It's the same way as if you'd pay for uh, a print advertisement or whatever advertising expense to acquire a customer. Mm -hmm. Basically, they're rolling their expense into breaking even or just below cost on decorating the shirt. They hook them in on the embroidered polo shirts, yeah. and then they're selling all of these different items to actually make money on the customer. Yeah, which um, uh, a lot of people go that, go that route with freight or with shipping as well. They decide to, quote unquote, lose money on their freight just to come in and get the prices that they want down the road on uh, additional orders. Kind of like the dollar sweet teas at McDonald's. I mean, they're probably making some money, but not a lot, but you're hooking them on the hamburgers and everything else yeah. that happens. Yeah, for sure. All right, so number five on overcoming price pressure. So we've heard be first, we've heard be best, we've heard be convenient and be disciplined. Lastly, be more than transactional. And this is where we're basically saying where the relationship comes in. If you are having a loss leader, um, this is where you need to build that relationship to where there are additional orders. So don't focus on just that one transaction and making whatever number you need to make this month or this week or just today. Focus on the relationship and make that customer worth more down the road. Yeah, customer, regardless of how many you have, customers are more than a number. And as you grow your business and complete a lot of transactions and have a lot of customers, this becomes even more challenging. Uh, but approach customers with thoughtfulness. Mm -hmm. So the same way you would think of a significant other um, at a special event, whether that's a birthday or Valentine's Day or an anniversary, think mm -hmm. of your customers in the same way. So if you're approaching a big date for them, could be the anniversary when they open their business. Maybe it's just as simple as an anniversary of the first order they played with you, uh, right. placed with you, just being thoughtful in the fact that, hey, maybe I'll send them a thank you card or an email or a special note or a promotional product item mm -hmm. just to thank them or congratulate them on something that matters to them to build that relationship. Yeah, I know uh, Ted posted pretty recently about it being family reunion season. If you know a reunion is coming up, send them a note the next the next year that you're thinking about their family and you know whether they have a reunion that year or not. You're building a relationship with that. Yeah, with actually that sincerely caring about your customers and getting to know them and building that relationship will make the world a difference here. So um, those are our five. Be first, be best, be convenient, be disciplined, and be more than transactional. We want to know from you which of those five uh, you think are most important. So we're going to go ahead and launch that poll. Yeah, so which of those five uh, ways to combat price pressure do you think, if you're not doing it already, will have the most impact on your business? Which one of those? So we'll give you a, a few seconds to fill that survey out. I'm really interested to know the results on this one. Yeah, yeah, think yeah. about it. It's probably going to take a while to fill, a couple minutes to fill this one out here. So we'll just give you a little bit. Um, what percentage of the audience has voted so far? 56%, those other 44% wake up. Come on now. Still thinking about it.
All right, looks like we're good. So let's go ahead and share those results. Courtney, if you could read them aloud to us. Sure, it looks like 15% tickets best to be first. 15% okay. be first. 26 be best. 26 be best. 7 be competitive. Be convenient. 7 be competitive or convenient. Seven. 19 be disciplined in price, and we've got the most at 33 uh, to be more than a transaction. Awesome. And that's kind of what we focus on in our yeah. business, too. Not only do we want to have fair pricing at stalls, but we want to ultimately buy into your customer success to your success, which is why we've started this Stalls TV studios. Okay. Is it time for my favorite part of the show? Dun, what dun, I've dun, been dun. looking forward to. All right, it's let's our do it. Stalls TV studio tour. So we'll start here. Taylor's, Taylor's following us on, on follow cam, so thanks for your help, Taylor. But uh, we're going to start here in our Ink Drop studio. And this whole studio that we're sitting in today is dedicated to digital printing and digital decorating. Here in this corner, we have a small format print and cut device, the Hotronics Fusion heat press. And you can see all along the wall, our team has merchandised it with items that you can decorate, basically with just this equipment. So what this gives us the ability to do is uh, bring customers or viewers like you in to see the technology before you invest in it. If you already have it, we can teach you how to use it. You can actually set up online live demonstrations like this with our sales team and with our educators to walk through uh, product support, to walk through how you can sell the product or how to just use it in general. We'll head over to this side of the room. In this corner, we have the Roland VS300i. So as we walk around, the room, you're actually going to see the investment level go up. So investment level in that corner is about $10,000 to get started. Over here, you're looking at fifteen dollars to $20,000. You can make a lot of similar items, but you can see on the back wall, we have some larger items printed as well because we have a larger format device. So again, all of this is dedicated to showing you how to use the product and how to make money with it. Over in this corner, we have the Epson direct-to-garment printer. Again, investment levels going up as we go around. So we can show you how the printer works, the items that you can print. We have some printed shirts on the back wall here, some dark ones. And then our last device that we have in this room is our large format sublimation printer. So we can show you how to decorate 100% polyester or polymer coated items in full color with this sublimation printer here. So I'm going to throw it over to Josh, and he's going to walk you out actually into the office, show you the Think Tank Studio and the CAD Lab Studio. Excellent. High five. All right, it's there the, it is. It's the show of five, so come on out this way. Taylor's going to follow me out into our main area here where we have um, Stalls TV reps set up uh, with cub cubicle space as well. And we're going to walk you into um, the Think Tank studio. Um, this is typically where our morning show happens every week. We switched it up on you today, but you can see we have this set up um, where we'll be able to sort of have discussions about how to grow your business, broadcast our Stalls TV morning show. Um, every day and then we're setting up for a grand opening so Jen is putting the finishing touches here on our hair bow making station so you'll see out in this main area we have a variety of application stations for our grand opening from hair bows to decorating headwear to customizing bags but one of my favorite studios that I'm most excited about is our CAD lab studio and this one's still sort of under construction but we have the uh, slat wall set up with the decorations this is where we basically teach you how to be successful with a heat press. Uh, we showcase vinyl cutting technology, um, a lot of the different things that you can make with a cutter, and really focus on the results and the decoration that you can produce for your customers. So you can see everything from team uniforms to oversized shirts that we'll talk about momentarily in our trends, uh, teach people how to present on, uh, teach people how to print on performance wear, how to decorate shoes, headwear, you name it. This is the CAD Labs, Lab Studio where all of that happens. And then we have our wall of decoration here where we can swap out these panels for different presentations and show different looks. So showing glitter finishes, reflective finishes, uh, sewn applique finishes, not only with rip away applique here, but also um, over on this side with uh, traditional applique and distressed twill. And basically different looks, different things you can create in your business with just a heat press or a vinyl cutter in, your, in a heat press to ultimately reach customers. And then last but not least is our uh, sort of wall of transfers where we show you how you can screen print with just a heat press and focus on screen printed transfers and a lot of the different applications and opportunities for those. So that's a quick studio tour of our CAD Lab studio. And we're going to take it back into our Ink Drop studio to talk a little bit about back to school trends. So let's go over to the um, 
computer here, and I want to walk through a, a quick presentation we have on back to school trends. Uh, first, we will focus on the ladies market. And to, to talk about the, the ladies market, we're talking from women all the way down to back to school uh, girls. And this is our trend report. So this is a theme of five. I'm going to show five looks uh, from retailers for ladies. So number one is panels, trims, and placement. We're seeing a lot of color blocking in both men's and women's apparel, and we're seeing a huge rise in trims. And this was cited a while ago to me by the, uh, one of the CEO of Boxercraft, Shelly Foland. Um, she said these trims are going to be really popular. You need to watch them. And now we're seeing them show up in retail. And luckily, um, they have some looks that you can buy wholesale from Boxercraft that have sort of these trims on sweatpants that you see in the bottom left corner. Also, some color blocked garments that you're able to source. So in addition to just generally color blocking trims, it's also placement and decoration of graphics. So we're seeing a lot of um, higher left chest placements or back of the calf placements on the leggings um, on the right hand side of your screen or vertical text oversized placements that you see across these shirts. So a lot of different opportunities with panels, trims, and placements. Um, oversize is not slowing down. This trend was huge um, throughout 2015 and even fall of 2014, and it's surging even more and being fueled by new styles. So we're seeing color blocking in oversized shirts, we're seeing short sleeve oversized shirts, and then we're also seeing um, softer, more fashionable fabrics. So you'll notice how on these oversized shirts we see a short sleeve now, uh, down in the bottom left and even in the bottom right of the screen, we see them uh, shirts with pockets as well, where actually the graphic is secondary to the pocket. So the sort of elements and details on the apparel are first, and then the graphic is secondary. But um, companies like Boxercraft are coming up with uh, slub versions, which is just a, a softer, more textured cotton that you can source in this. Uh, Penn and Sportswear is coming up with contrast color pockets that you can source for this. And J America is always coming up with new styles as well. So oversize is big. Make sure you show that. Now, in addition to oversize, I have it, the just right fit or the just right weight is big as well. So we're seeing a lot, if you look in the bottom left of your screen, we're seeing fleece that hits right on the waistline or even potentially a small uh, mid-drift that's a lighter weight fleece uh, rising in popularity. So companies like Independent Trading Company um, out of Pennsylvania that does wholesale fleece has a lot of different styles of fleece. Uh, companies like Alternative Apparel that are a little bit more fashionable carry styles like this. Lighter weight fleece is popular. Once again, notice the unique decoration um, almost on the top of the shoulder like a TV number would be on a, on a team jersey. We're seeing a lot of the same things. We're seeing color blocking, contrasting color, um, shirts, raglans, and then we're also seeing heathered looks um, rise in popularity, especially in performance wear. And MyoGrid from Imprintables Warehouse is a, a great place to get looks like this for uh, practice gear or even just casual wear. Our fourth trend that I want to report in female fashion is we have spirit and it's game day every day. So we are seeing popular fan jerseys being worn on campuses and to school, even when it's not game day. It could be Monday, Tuesday, it doesn't matter. School spirit is at an all time high. We're also seeing um, interesting elements in details such as bling on game day apparel. So it's more than just the players on the field um, that are playing, whether that's uh, men or women. It's the fans that are going to the game or going to school every day. Additionally, we're seeing some uh, lady styles in these sparkle tees that are very popular um, in this market as well. So sparkle tees actually have a glitter sort of texture in the t-shirt that's kind of woven in there. And you can source these from uh, J America, Sanmar, Pennant Sportswear, the name a few. And off the shoulder fleece is popular. Um, that's the top left design. Now the cool thing about this is you notice how this has a number and design. So feel free to put that uh, game day look across a variety of wearables. It's more than just fan jerseys. And then lastly, of course, with back to school, we want to focus a little more attention on the kids because this is where a lot of the opportunity is. And there's a variety of looks I want to walk through here. Number one is the contrast color waistband uh, to match the decoration on the leggings in the bottom left of your screen. Uh, leggings like this are available from Boxercraft with the contrast color waistband, and you can customize these. And we're also seeing uh, attention to horizontal striping, contrast color pockets, especially in bling, 
and even full color sublimated printed leggings. All of these looks are things that you can start to think about as you're making equipment investments in your business. Now, time is at a premium here, so we're gonna fast forward through the men's trend report here where I'm gonna show you five back to school trends for men's or boys apparel. Number one, you see this everywhere at all your big athletic retailers, patterns of performance. Not only is performance wear being elevated in its design and style, but you're seeing patterns incorporated into all types of performance wear from loose fit to compression to inserts to hoodies, you name it. And every blank apparel provider seems to have their uh, particular pattern that they're promoting from Sandmars camo hex to Badger sportswear's uh, digital camo to Augusta sportswear uh, roller printed basic camos. You have a variety of choices here to capitalize on patterns, but show this, especially uh, in boys apparel. And this one's interesting, fit for fashion fleece, where we're seeing sweatpants that are a little more tapered and slim cut. These styles are tough to find right now. One place that I know has them is Alternative Apparel, has a style of sweatpants that look like this. And then American Apparel has uh, the sort of cut off sleeve uh, hooded sweatshirt uh, that you see sort of at the bottom center of your screen. So fleece that's fit for fashion so you can up your style even when you're dressing casual. And who doesn't like to wear sweatpants to work? I wish I could wear sweatpants. I may start wearing sweatpants to work. We'll yeah. see next week on the morning show. Okay. So images are everything. Um, basically, when you leverage digital print technologies like this whole Ink Drop Studio is dedicated to, like sublimation and print cut, we're seeing the use of images. So, of course, famous athletes being fully sublimated onto the front of shirts or sublimated onto socks or print cut graphics that include images onto the front of apparel. We're seeing the use of images in a lot of different things. So make sure you, you think about how you can take an image and merchandise it as part of the overall look to that high school, that team, that business, whoever you're selling to. Retro and varsity flat bill caps are hotter than ever. Make sure you jump in on that. You can print the underside or the top of the bill and of course the front of the hat. And then we're seeing retro looks like the starter jacket that we reported on a few weeks back and varsity jackets making a surge even for casual apparel for players who aren't even on the team just to show school support. And then lastly, be bright. You wanna make sure you're leveraging bright colors, color fades, gradients across a wide variety of wearables. And all of these things combined will help you grow your business in the latest trends. So that concludes this section. Now, if you watched our trailer, you probably thought Courtney Kay was gonna tell you all about those back to school trends. Where is she? But, um, I don't know if you noticed on the tour, she's not around. She hopped on a jet plane and headed off to Vegas without us. So, But she did leave some quite a few ideas for our trend report she there. Did. But she's probably enjoying uh, something by a pool in Vegas right now. I would Actually, imagine. they're three hours. It's eight in the morning, so. Yeah, she's probably by the pool. Yeah, probably. Right. Yeah. We miss you, Courtney. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us. We were really excited about the episode. I'm even more excited for the next two days when we have a bunch of customers coming in here to actually get hands-on demonstrations and classes and just learn how to be successful in the decorating business. It's our grand opening, Stalls TV open house happening tomorrow and Wednesday. Yeah, to announce our brand new studios. And if you can't attend, uh, if you didn't sign up, it is sold out. So if you didn't sign up, I'm sorry, you can't attend at this point. But we will be recording the sessions over the next two days. Um, even when we get hands on at a local production facility at Stalls DFC, mm -hmm. we're going to record all those classes and we'll share them out on StallsTV.com. So make sure you register. And if you're not coming tomorrow, We'll see you next week on the morning show here on Stalls TV. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us.